nice to see that sporting embrace. But there can be little doubt that Alexander Rusik, the tournament number one seed, has just produced a masterful display to box his way to what must surely be status as the undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world and the winner of the inaugural Muhammad Ali trophy. Murat Gassiev gave it everything that he had. But Mur Alexander Rusik sinks to the canvas in celebration and giving thanks after producing a quite marvelous display. Marvelous. Mar I mean, there's not enough superlatives. I got to mute this. We're going to be here for a lot. I'm interested to hear the cards. Let me first say that this video is real time. Right now, it is uh, 6.09 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the East Coast of the United States, right outside of Philadelphia. Alexander Usyk should cruise to a unanimous decision victory. In my card, he won every single round against Murat Gassiev. And it's just amazing that at his size at about 6'3", looking at about 220 pounds in there the night, even though this is for the um, uh, Cruiserweight 200-pound uh, championships, all of them, the WBC, WBA, IBF, um, WBO, Ring Magazine. I don't know if the IBO is on the line, but basically this winner... Usyk is the best fighter at cruiserweight in the world. I can't think of another cruiserweight that can beat him. I don't think that Liberdev can beat him. Bredis can't, you know, um, beat him in a, um, in a uh, rematch. Look what he did to Murat Gassiev, you know? Like with the movement, with the punch output, the punch variety. Yeah, you know, the power is, 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 is not there. You know, but he's so similar to Lomachenko. We've been talking about it since I've been covering this guy for a couple of years now. Like, he's so, look at that trophy. That trophy looks digital, too. That trophy is fucking beautiful. Waiting for him to hear the cards. I don't, don't be surprised if Murat Gassiev gets, like, the, a miracle card. In July of 1986. But this is the conclusion of the first round of the world, the first season of the World Boxing Super Series Cruiserweight Tournament. Here's a little bit of highlights. You know, Murat Gassiev, what he was doing, you were seeing that his key money shots were the shots to the body, but he couldn't get in on the inside and he couldn't get past the jab. And and and, and something that, that, that fight fans have been talking about with Abel Sanchez fighters is the lack of head movement. And there was it was it was literally non existent. You know, the angles that was being presented to him, like it was, you know, look, that's Rob probably. You know, I can't check it right now, but man, you know, I don't I don't see any cruiserweights that can deal with him. So we're waiting for the cards to be read. Hopefully, um, you know, a post-fight interview. I want to see the award ceremony. I want to see them present the, the 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 Muhammad Ali trophy. By the way, his um, wife is there. You know, his wife is there to um, present the trophy to the winner. So we're probably going to be here for a while since this is technically like a real big event. So, you know, you guys hang in there, relax. And uh, we're going to talk about the cruiserweight division, what is possibly next. And if Usyk, you know, should move to the heavyweight division and possibly test the waters against a Deontay Wilder or something. And Gassiev was from Russia. And that they're fighting here on Gassiev's home turf. But there's been a terrific cordiality between the camps and the fighters throughout the buildup. So much so that Russ Abner, who was the chief second in Alexander Usyk's corner, he manufactured the gloves for both Alexander Usyk and Murat Gassiev. Not only that, they were in his possession until the rules meeting yesterday when they were checked over by Abel Sanchez. That's how cordial relations have been between the two camps. Russ Ab and but the manufacturer. Okay, so while we're waiting on um, them to read the cards, Usyk, if he wins, obviously, we're still waiting for him to read the cards, but he should be the first ever um, champion undisputed champion in the four belt era which is very very difficult to do with all the promoters and the politics involved you know how hard it is for somebody to get all four belts without any networks managers promoters or the fighters or money or anything being involved you know so right now he can stick around at the cruiserweight division and fight WBA world champion. Now, the WBA, it's a difficult situation to explain, but he can fight a Babette Shumanoff. He can fight um, a champion in recess, a um, Dennis Lieberdev. You also have Tony Bellew, who's been flirting with the idea. He's W. Let's head up to David Diamante for the official verdict. 
go to the judges' scorecards. Robin Taylor, 120 to 108. Moro De Fiore, 119 to 109. Philippe Leverke, 119 to 109. Perfect. All three for your winner. Perfect. A unanimous decision. He's still undefeated. And now the undisputed. Perfect. champion of the world. Give him his belt. Fistic history here in Moscow by becoming the first undisputed cruiserweight champion of the four. Look at that trophy. And he has also earned himself the inaugural Muhammad Ali. They better not drop it. And there's confirmation. The conclusion of the World Boxing Super Series has reached its climax here in the Russian capital. They missed him one. It there it is. Courtesy of a masterclass from Alexander Usyk, winning 12 rounds out of 12 against the fellow undefeated champion for the IBF judge from the USA, Robin Taylor, and then 119-109 for Mario Di Fiore, the WBC judge from the USA, and Philip Abit, the WBA judge from Belgium. Alexander Usyk, all smiles up in the boxing ring and draped in every championship belt. He'll also be given the Ring Magazine championship belt as well. I spoke with the associate editor of Ring Magazine, Tom Gray, and he confirmed that the winner of tonight's contest will be the Ring Magazine Look at that champion. trophy. And that goes with the WBA, WBC, WBO, and IBF belts. Strat That's trophy. For Alexander Usyk, he is the new undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world. And the Muhammad Ali Trophy will be presented by the Chief Boxing Officer of Kamosa and Lonnie and Ali, now, the gentlemen, wife of the late Muhammad Ali. The first ever Muhammad Ali Trophy. Please welcome the wife of the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, Miss Lonnie Ali. This is a historic and great honor, you know? I may have over pushed it. Now we're doing it for news, so we, we should be good. We not, you know, we you know this is a monumental boxing news event right here, so we're not doing any wrong covering this, I hope. Muhammad Ali trophy to conclude the world boxing super series in the cruiserweight division. Look at Loma. When the gala took place in Monaco one year ago, tell them your name the number one seed. And he selected Marco Hook as his quarterfinal opponent. He, out, he stopped him with a terrific display Look at that in the trophy. tenth round over in Berlin. Then he went on the road once again to face off against the undefeated WBC champion Myris Bridges, prevailing in a fight of. Okay, let's talk a little bit. All right. So while they're doing that, let me go over here. You know, they're taking pictures and whatnot. Let's see if we can get. You know, um, if he's going to do an interview, let's go over here, right? There's another look at the uh, trophy. You know, him, the team, all the belts with Loma. He kind of looked vampire still, like a vampire. But look at the names. All right. So let's go full screen. Let's go full screen. As you can see, he is now... You know, he has all the belts. So you would think, okay, well, you know, he's going to have mandatories, right? We don't know who his IBF mandatory is going to be because, you know, Marat Gassiev just lost that title. So he'll be having an IBF mandatory sometime in the next year. But if he's going to stay at cruiserweight, you know, you would think, okay, well, what fights can he go after? You know, that would be, you know, like big. F oh, wait, here we are. Let's go back. Disputed cruiserweight champion of the world. Would you please give both boxers a generous round of applause for the fantastic spectacle they have just produced. Murad Gassiev, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. We understand that it hasn't gone your way tonight, but what are your thoughts on making it through to the final and competing in a contest of this magnitude for all four cruiserweight belts? 
First of all, I want to congrats Alexander Rusik team. This great job. Thank you for this fight. And I want to thank, thank for all boxing fans from Ukraine, from Russia, from all world who support boxing. Uh, today, I have best opponent in my professional career. Before this tournament, he favored and uh, and he proved this. And again, congrats, Alexander team. This is a very good experience for me. Very magnanimous to the team, you're very generous to your opponents. You were the tournament number two seed, as you say, he was the number one seed. How difficult an opponent was he, particularly with his movement and his high punch volume? How difficult was that for you to deal with tonight? You know, every fighter different. Some fighters have good legs, some good, a good punch, good defense, and you never know what's happened. Maybe they fight, your legs stop, or you lose your power. You need just do your best job, what, what you can do, and only God knows what's happened. You possess such devastating punching power that you're always in the contest for as long as you are on your feet. How deeply or how much did you still believe that you could produce the winning shot even when the rounds weren't going your way? How much belief did you retain that you could find a finishing punch when the rounds were getting away from you? In cruiserweight division you have chance from first round, last round, every round because 200 pound, one easy shot and you in canvas. I believe every round I listen my coach, my corner and try to do my best just today, Alexander Day. That's it. So, I know that you and your team will take time to reflect, but what will be next for you, Murat? Will you stay at Cruiserweight? Will you try your hand and move up to heavyweight? How do you see your immediate future in the sport of boxing? First of all, I want to come to my hometown, Vladikavkaz, spend time with my family, with my friends, with my people. Here at Karazma, Russia, Pyotr, Misha, and Namsa, Murat Gassiev, thank you very much indeed. Commiserations tonight. Thank you for playing your part in a terrific contest and we look forward to your ring return. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, now we're going to make our way across the ring and speak to the new undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world and the winner of the inaugural Muhammad Ali Trophy, the tournament number one seed, Alexander Rusik. Alexander, tell us your immediate thoughts on having claimed every belt there is available in your weight class. It's at the WBA interim, WBA world. Thanks, God. Thanks, God. Thanks, God. But here in the boxing ring, you demonstrated your full repertoire of skills, your movement, your punch output, your punch resistance when you were hurt. You are facing the best opponents of your career. To what extent is this the best performance of your career? I like his haircut. This guy. I can't get that haircut. Ball. Спасибо тем людям, которые были со мной в лагере и тех, кто мне помогали. Лайслав Александрович Бинда. Thank you, thank you to all people that uh, were staying with me in my training camp. Vladislav Binder. Vladislav Alexandrovich Binder. Samatkal Edward Viktorovich. Anton Nikolaevich Panachenko. Andrei Borisovich. Sanya Foka. Все те люди, которые приложили максимум усилий для того, чтобы я выглядел вот так. Много людей, и они присутствуют здесь. Моя семья, моя жена, моя мама. He, yeah, he gives gratitude to, to all his team, naming each of the participants of the team. Uh, he says that uh, uh, the, the, his team made him look like, like he looked now in the ring, and uh, uh, close, his close people are here, his family, his mom watching, uh, watching on TV. Thank you very much to all. This is our victory. Most certainly is. Now you've emulated the legendary Evander Holyfield by becoming an undisputed champion in the cruiserweight division. He of course went on to the heavyweight ranks and boxed with great distinction up there. You've enjoyed success against the biggest super heavyweights in World Series boxing. 
what will you do next? Are you looking to move up and challenge the heavyweight contenders and champions with your boxing skill? What's the next step for you? Excellent question. После этого поединка мы с командой обдумаем, нам надо хорошенько отдохнуть и восстановиться. И тогда мы обдумаем, но я же слышал, что Тони Белью хочет победителя этого турнира. И он как раз боксирует супер тяжелой весовой категории. Он же меня увидит, когда я говорю, «Эй, мой дорогой друг, я готов». We need to take a rest after this difficult fight. After that, we will sit with my team and take the decision. Uh, at this moment, I heard that Tony Bellew is looking for a fight with the winner of Muhammad Ali Trophy. Uh, I hope he would see me talking. Hey, Tony Bellew, are you ready? Is that a heavyweight or cruiserweight? Если он не хочет спускаться, то я с удовольствием поднимусь к нему. If he doesn't want him to go down, I will go up for him. Я просто буду дополнительную порцию макарон кушать, и мне будет это на пользу. I will take extra spaghetti for dinner. Now, you share a birthday with the legendary figure of the late Muhammad Ali. The 17th of January is when you were born, that's when he was born as well. What does it mean to you to receive this inaugural, this first ever Muhammad Ali trophy from Muhammad Ali's wife, Lonnie Ali? What does this trophy mean? Put it into words for us. That trophy is crazy. Первое, что я подумал, когда я мне подняли руку, я мысленно сказал: Господи, Боженька, Иисусе Христосе, благодарю тебя за ту силу, которую ты мне дал, и то, что ты меня сегодня здесь, сюда меня сегодня привел. The first thing I thought when my, when my Jesus, hand was up, forever. I thought, oh, Jesus Christ, God, Lord, thank you for all you've done for me. Thank you for bringing me here and for leading me in my life. And any thoughts on the trophy and the fact that it is, does bear the name of the greatest figure in the sport of boxing? Where will this sit alongside the world amateur title, the Olympic title, the four championship belts? Where will this go on the trophy cabinet? He's got to talk about the trophy. They got to have him talk about the trophy. They need those quotes. Uh, I will keep this trophy on a special place at my home because my beloved Wife, Ekaterina, has already prepared a special place for it. Well, okay, Alexander's all right, we can use that. Once again, becoming the undisputed cruiserweight champion with a terrific performance and becoming the first ever winner of the Muhammad Ali Trophy to conclude the World Boxing Super Series. Very well done indeed. Olympijski, спасибо. Люди, земляки и те, кто поддерживает, спасибо за поддержку. Москва, 2018. Бам! Батя Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause if you would for the new undisputed cruiserweight world champion and the winner of the Muhammad Ali Trophy, Alexander Rusik. I'll now hand the microphone back to our Okay, we're going to stop right there. All right. All right. Um, Marat Gassiev didn't really stand a chance. He didn't have the skill set, the pedigree. A lot of people can't believe he's only uh, 24 years old. Alexander Usyk, as we talked about, is now the WBC, WBA, WBO, IBF, and Ring Magazine heavyweight champion of the world. Right now, looking at his rivals in the cruiserweight division, I don't see any of those guys beating him. 
I don't see the WBA champion in recess because for those who don't know, the WBA, in fact, let's go look at it right now. Um, the WBA has currently four world champions. Okay. Now I'm going to explain to you what I mean. You'll see. You'll see. Let's go. Uh, we got, we got a, oh wait, it's right here. It's already up. It's already up. Let me uh, zoom out a little bit. Let's go down to Cruiserweight, right? It hasn't been updated yet, but you have Babette Shumanov, who just won the world title. This was a couple of weeks ago. You have Gula Marion, who's the interim champion, champion in recess, Dennis Liberdev. And then, you know, you had... Um, um, Marat Gassiev just lose. So looking at, you know, the champions as a whole and looking at the division as a whole, I don't see guys like Anthony Dabiti or, you know, um, even if Kowalski builds himself back up and you see him say he wants Tony Bellew, but Tony Bellew's promoter says basically, you know, he don't want to fight unless it's like a huge, huge money fight. How huge of a money fight is Ulijinder Usyk versus Tony Bellew for all the belts? I think for the glamour of it, it's a very, very good fight for Tony Bellew. But at this point in time, they're trying to extend the 35-year-old Tony Bellew's career, which is smart, you know. He's got those two David Hay wins, whatever you think about what David Hay's physical, you know, state was at the time. Still, he's got those two David Hay wins, you know. And, you know, he was in uh, Rocky. He's the WBC Emeritus Champion, meaning the number one contender. Whenever he wants, he can get Ulysses Usyk over everybody else. And then technically, Dennis Liberdev has like second dibs. But if he were to move to heavyweight, then that opens up the debate of, oh, shit. You know, the best cruiserweight in the world is moving up. And that's going to open up a whole different can of worms for guys like Anthony Joshua, you know, Deontay Wilder. You know, Gerald Miller, because see Gerald Miller, Tyson Fury, because better believe if Usyk was to move up to heavyweight with the backing that he has and, all, and, and, that, and that, that prestige of having all those belts, he's going to be made a mandatory within one fight, maybe two, no more than two fights um, um, after being a heavyweight. But, you know, I'm glad that this was a success. They had 24,000. It was sold out in Moscow. You know, it's a shame that um, it was over in pay-per-view on the UK. And over here, I paid $10 for it on this. Uh, on, Remember, on, it was a poor training camp. On this service called uh, Cloud TV. The last time I got Cloud TV was when um, they had Usyk versus Glowoski. And it was really a horrible, horrible, you know, experience. So I said I would never go back. But overall, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to hang on to it. No, I'm not. It's only, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm going to cancel, actually. I'm not going to hang on to it. But um, I'm glad that the World Boxing Super Series, you know, so far, everything has gone to plan outside of the two different, you know, injuries for the cruiserweight, you know, and the, um, and the uh, uh, super middleweights. We're just waiting for Colin Smith versus George Groves to be finalized. It's supposed to take place in um saudi arabia of all places in september and then it'll close out season one of the world box of super series and then we're already rolling out our videos here for season two which is the 140 or 118 pound division so so far the world box of super series is a success for a lot of people who were pissed off that we didn't have a consistent place to watch the world box of series super series over here in the states they're going to be on a platform called the zone they you know there we are they got some gear from them earlier this week but it's going to be uh 9.99 a month you know you're going to get well over 40 20 28 fights across all of the round I, yeah, it's too i did so many videos though that please excuse me but understand that you'll have an easier time watching these fights in the states going forward for season two the finale for season one of the super middleweights i don't know yet I'm Tishri Controversy. This is Tishri Controversy Live. Congratulations to Ulysses Usyk. Murat Gassiev is only 24 years old. You know, he can build his way back up and probably rule that division and beat all the guys, you know, like Uni Dertikos and all those guys. Maybe a comeback fight once he gets, you know, a couple of wins under his belt is to build him up to fight Miris Breedis, maybe, you know. 
But depending on what Usyk is going to do, he's going to beat all of them again. So they're going to be really looking and see, well, is this guy going to move up or not? I'm Tissue Controversy. This is Tissue Controversy Live. Please subscribe.